Dude, I've had just an excessive amount of issues trying to make this video. I've been a ball of disease for the past month. Last video, I was struggling with strep, could barely talk. This video, I have like a sinus infection and I keep just coughing all on the mic and it keeps screwing everything up. Then I had some recording issues. So this is probably gonna be my last attempt at trying to make this thing. Uh, but Taylor Heineken, I'm gonna keep calling him Heineken because it just rolls off the tongue a lot better than Heineken does. But Taylor Heineken, uh, the man had himself quite a game against the Falcons, went 22 for 33, 300 plus passing yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. So very solid game, but he's had a, a very good season as well for the uh, the Washington football peoples. Um, he has, he's like a little under 70% completion percentage, eight touchdowns, three interceptions. Uh, very solid season from Taylor Heineke, who was announced the starter, I believe, what was it, like week three or something? No, well, week two, I think. Uh, but very well done. Uh, he's had like five games for the football team, and he's played well in all of them. Uh, I think he started off in the, the Bucks the playoff game against the Bucks last year. And sometimes you see these backup quarterbacks show up for one game. They have a great game. Everyone thinks they're the next Tom Brady. Uh, but then they kind of fizzle out. I remember like Matt Flynn subbed in for Aaron Rodgers one time in like 2010 and had like six touchdowns in one game. Everyone thought he was like the next, you know, the heir apparent to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, but he ended up fizzling out but Taylor Heineke seems kind of legit man like he's had quite a few good games in a row uh, hopefully he can keep it up but uh this Falcons game you know the Falcons were running a lot of cover too they were jamming the receivers at line making you know trying to you know disrupt their routes and their timing uh but uh Heineken did a great job just kind of staying in the pocket uh continuing to let those routes develop and um completing a lot of throws especially like right down the middle of the field you know where those safeties split he's able to complete the ball right down the middle of the field so he, he 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 did pretty good in this game didn't make any you know hefty mistakes there were a couple plays that could have been picked off but uh that always happens to quarterbacks so that's not like too much to worry about but we'll go ahead and hop in the film see you know what he did well what he didn't do well see it all all right, I guess uh, a, a quick shout out to, I'll move my face here, so you say UTTMFB Highlights. They put their logo right in the middle of the screen, uh, but they made the highlights, so thank you for that. Uh, but I'll be covering up your logo with my face for right now. Um, but first play from Taylor Heineke. Touchdown to Terry McLaren up top of the screen, throws a go route, absolute beautiful ball. The safety wasn't able to get there in time. Uh, well done. The concept here is same concept that every team from like elementary school to freaking NFL runs four verts. They got go route, go route, go route, and you guessed it, uh, another go route. Uh, but the rule on this is that if the safeties split, there's two safeties and they split if they're running some kind of cover two, cover four variant. Uh, then this slot receiver right here is going to bend in, which he goes ahead and does because these safeties split. And obviously they have a little check down right here. But um, so as a quarterback, when you're running four verts against this kind of look, any kind of like zone variant, um, basically you're going to be looking for where is your one-on-one -on -one matchup. So what receiver do you have that is one-on-one -on -one against the defender uh, that he can, you know, win on that go route, win on that seam or that bender or that, you know, the check down route. Um, where can you find that one-on-one -on -one matchup? And Taylor Heineke does a great job finding it here. Uh, this safety doesn't extend out to the sideline. Not that he's taught to do that, but this safety goes ahead and kind of like tries to midpoint these two, but doesn't get over far enough. Um, and so Taylor Heineke knows that he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup between Terry McLaren and this poor little sucker right here. Uh, and he just absolutely demolishes them on, their, on this route. This is like a cover two man look. So that corner is man on Terry McLaren uh, and 20, 22 just gets caught in the mud, and uh, you know Terry runs right by him, throws a dime on time before that safety can get there. Well thrown ball, right read, everything's perfect about this play for Taylor. All right, second play from Taylor, not too perfect. A uh, little roll out to the left here, and you know looks back and throws it to this deep post. Um, I believe this is just kind of like a design shot play from Washington here. This is probably one of those things that you see on film. Uh, or you're watching film throughout the week and you think that if we're able to get the quarterback to roll out to this way, then the defenders will all go this way and vacate this deep zone right here. Uh, and it just didn't end up happening. Uh, the concept they have going on is like a flood concept. They got a post route from Terry McLaren. They got a whip route from number or the number two and then like a crosser from the tight end. Uh, in a normal flood concept, you're going to have this, you know, uh, instead of a post route here, you're going to have maybe like a go route or just some kind of like deep corner. Um, to get that higher level zone and that flood concept. 
Uh, but instead, I think that on film they saw if we roll out, then they're going to vacate this zone over here, and we're going to throw a post wide open for a touchdown. Um, and you know, I have some issues with the design of that play, um, just you know how long it takes to develop and everything. But if you're Taylor Heineken here, you got to see that Terry McLaren is double covered down the field. You know, you can't see him on the screen, but down the field, you got to see that Terry McLaren's double covered and just take your. Uh, Take your easy like five to six yards with number two here and complete a pass, you know, get a couple yards. Instead, he tries to force the ball downfield, and this was almost intercepted. I mean, like that's like a foot away from being picked off by the safety there. I uh, threw it into double coverage. The number one rule of quarterbacking is don't throw it behind you when you're rolling out. Um, and I know it was a, like a designed play to do this, but still, like, again, I just have some issues with the design of this play. So, um, you know, you'd like to see him just get the yards there instead of trying to force the ball into double coverage. Taylor Heineke did this a lot in this game. I think that's because the Falcons just dropped back in coverage a bunch. They didn't, you know, they didn't expect Taylor Heineke to be uh, the next Michael Vick here running the ball. But this man's got a little bit of wheels on him. He does a great job of just, you know, seeing the parting the Red Sea literally because they're wearing red jerseys, seeing the parting the Red Sea, and and getting some yards. The only issue I have this play is if you're looking for a long-term solution at quarterback, you'd like to see them get to like their second or third read before running the ball uh, now again he sees the parting the red sea here so it's not like you know if, if, if you see that as a quarterback just take the run but just a side note uh, they got the curl flat concept here and he looks like he's reading this curl flat concept he's got his eyes in this direction and he seems like he just looks at this curl and says fuck it and runs the ball um, I'd like to see him get to this flat and just throw this flat route and like you know you know let his his playmakers run with the ball instead of himself again not that much of an issue but you can see that if he was truly reading uh, this curl flat route, he has his flat route wide open right here. He can complete the ball to him. Uh, but instead, you know what? Like, I mean, I, I have no issues with it. If you see the parting of the Red Sea, go ahead and run that ball, get that first down. So not a bad play from Taylor Heineke, just kind of something to be cautious of in the future. If you see quarterbacks that are kind of scared, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they're, they're kind of run first. I'm not saying that Taylor Heineke is a running quarterback, but some quarterbacks – We'll just see the slightest of a gap and try to run it in that gap uh, instead of keep their eyes downfield. All right, another not so great play from Taylor Heineke here. He's got a, you know, uh, the same thing, four verts concept, and he tries to throw this ball late to the go route for a whole shot, uh, and and very close to being picked off. Probably would have ended the game considering that the score is 22 to 30 in the fourth quarter. Um, but the concept they have here, same thing as before, except for it's just in three by one, which means they have three receivers up top, one receiver down here. Same thing, you got a vert, you got a vert that can convert to like a bender, and then you got this kind of crosser route that goes to the other hash, and you got a go route right here. I know my head's kind of covering that up, but you can understand the concept. Of course, yeah, little check down here. Uh, of course, if I'm Taylor Heineke here, uh, I, I would, I would kind of just. X out this receiver right here. I mean, you got basically double coverage here. You got a corner who's in position to cover this. You got a safety in position to cover this. Uh, instead, you know, I'd find your one-on-one -on -one matchup over here. What ends up happening is they're in some kind of zone and all these defenders just drop back, drop out, uh, which leaves that this check down right here wide open. I mean, he could have thrown that, thrown to that check down, get an easy 10 to 12 yards, possibly more if that running back's really good. I think that's McKissick. Um, Instead, he tries to work up top and then work back down to this whole shot. And again, it's it's not necessarily the wrong read. It's not what I would do. Um, but if you are going to throw this whole shot here, uh, the defense is in cover too, which means that this corner is covering this zone right here. He's got the, the, the flat. The safety has got deep. So you got a very small area where you can complete this ball. And this is a, a very tough throw. I mean, this is something not all quarterbacks can do. And you got this go route coming. You got to hit it right here, fast. You got to hit it before the safety is able to make a play on it. Uh, and 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 what ends up happening is Taylor Heineke, you know, gets his eyes in this direction and then tries to work back to the left. But you'll see what I mean here when I run the play. Um, if he wants to throw this ball, he's got to throw it right now. I mean, you can see that that the corner is sitting in the mud. He's in some kind of cover two zone. Um, so if he wants to throw this, he's got to throw it right here, right now, on a rope before that safety can get to it. Obviously, he ends up throwing it late, and uh, what happens is, is it's almost picked off. You know, safety makes a play on it. Um, but very lucky that that wasn't picked off. Again, you'd like to see him uh, either commit to one side or the other instead of looking to the right, coming back to the left. I'm not going to do a whole lot of analysis on this one. This is kind of just a lucky play. I just wanted to throw it in here because it's fun. Heineke does a great job evading the pressure and then just trucks an absolute, absolute duck. I mean, that pass probably has a 50% chance of being intercepted. 
thirty percent chance of, of or like a forty percent chance of being incomplete and like a ten percent chance of being caught for a touchdown. But I mean, like I w- when I played college ball, I wish that I had some more passes like this because I threw a couple ducks into the end zone that were picked off instead. Uh, but hey, man, like whatever works for you, like go for it, I guess. Like, <laughs> but. You know, again, good job evading the pressure. I'm not sure you like to see your quarterback kind of just chucking it up in the air, but hey, man, like, what do I know? I don't. I didn't play in the NFL. Play number five, four to six, somewhere around there. Uh, you know, this is one of the more impressive throws he had. Um, and this doesn't look like, I mean, this looks like a clean pocket to someone who has never played quarterback before, but he's got linemen getting pushed up in his face. There's a lot of, you know, inexperienced quarterbacks that will just say, screw it and try to roll out and make something happen. But instead, Taylor Heineke keeps his eyes downfield, completes the ball to number one on the dig route. Uh, fantastic throw. That's a hard throw to make when you're kind of under pressure. The play they got going on here is like an over under concept, I believe it's called. I'm not great with the names of, you know, what NFL teams call them, but. He's got like a seam or like a you know a straight up go from number three here. Uh, he's got a deep dig route from number two and an under route from number one. Basically, this go is designed to just get the safeties out of there, uh, make them a non-factor in the play, and then basically you're just reading the linebackers. If the linebackers drop underneath the dig, then you got this under route. If the linebackers don't get much depth, then you got the dig route. Uh, and it, as you can see in the play, they're both open. They're both open. I mean, if, if I'm if I'm Taylor Heineke and I'm in this situation, I might take the under, but like the man's got some arm talent. He got more arm talent than I got, so he's able to complete that dig route, twenty yard pass under pressure, completed it straight to number one. Well thrown ball. Uh, you know, great job keeping his eyes downfield. All right, and this is uh, this is probably the most impressive play that I actually saw from Taylor Heineke, and it's an it's an incompletion. Probably the most impressive play I saw though. He's got someone flying in his face when there shouldn't be someone flying in his face. And Terry McLaren obviously drops the ball. But uh, the problem with this play here is, you know, I'm no expert on offensive line protections. Uh, I never was really good at remembering them. Uh, But I know that if there are only four people rushing the quarterback and you got five offensive linemen blocking, uh, they all should be have someone at least get a hand on them, at least attempt to block them. And you can see this number 35 here. I'm assuming this tackle should have stepped out and tried to block this 35. And then you have, you know, the guard, you know, block right here. Maybe the running back was supposed to, you know, play fake and like come and block in this direction. But I don't know. Someone should have blocked this man. Uh, but Terry McLaren does a fantastic job of, of, you know, he's got someone in his face five years ago. Like he's probably going to the freaking hospital after this play. He's probably getting his head taken off. But he does a fantastic job keeping his his poise and, and keeping his eyes downfield in the face of pressure and, and completing this curl route. I mean, that's just an impressive elite level throw under pressure. That's something you don't see a lot of quarterbacks able to make. Um, and obviously, Terry McLaren's got to catch this ball. But that's probably the most impressive play that I saw from Taylor Heineke in the entire game. Terry McLaren, or no, Taylor Heineke. At, keeps confusing me. Taylor Heineke had himself quite a game against the Falcons. Uh, he's you know proved to be clutch. Uh, did a great job tucking the ball and running when 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 you know there was a parting the Red Sea and he, he saw the opening there. Uh, I don't really like the Falcons' game plan against him. Um, it, it seemed like they were just dropping everyone back in coverage uh, and not accounting for the fact that Taylor Heineke you know isn't Peyton Manning of 40 years old uh, and, and can run the ball at least a little bit. Um, but impressive game from him. He kept his eyes downfield in a lot of situations where a lot of quarterbacks would have just scrambled out and tried to make something dumb happen and ended up taking like a 10-yard sack. And uh, he's proved again and again to just be a clutch player. I think this is the second game where he's led a game-winning you know, drive against the team. Uh, and I'm excited to see more from him, man. I'm really excited. So, you know, good luck to him. Uh, but that's all I got. So, peace.